All right, so I want to start with a star's motion through space. And we've talked about one particular, something that could look like stellar motion before. So um, when a, oh, I'm giving away the answer in the question apparently, so I guess I can't answer, ask you the question. But just as a refresher, uh, we talked about before that if you see a, a star change in positions on two different parts of the sky, then the, uh, you know, the, the apparent viewpoint as you're, you're viewing it from, you know, two different points around the sun, say in January and July, that shift is called parallax. But that's not due to the motion of the star. That's just due to the motion of the earth around the sun and seeing the star from two different angles, right? So I wanted to go ahead and contrast that idea of parallax with this idea of proper motion because they seem like they could be really similar, but actually they're different. So um, let me go walk through an animation here to show you the difference. So in parallax, we are looking at six months apart. So let's say that we see the star in the sky at one position in April. Then six months later in October, it's shifted to a different part of the sky. And remember the size of that parallax is gonna depend on its distance from the earth. Um, but let's say that we observe again six months later it looks like it's shifted nearly back into position. Six months after that, it's shifted back to the left. And we could keep observing six months apart in, you know, watch this star kind of walk across the sky. And what we notice is that it now it seems to be in a higher part of the sky than it was, you know, several years ago when we began observing. So if we look at the difference between all of the April positions of the star, so not taking into account parallax, then we can see the actual real motion of the star in the sky over that uh, period of six years. And similarly, if we observed the same set of images that were all taken in October, we would observe those shifted due to parallax. Uh, but the amount that the star has traveled across the sky is the same in both cases. So this, uh, this is, different than parallax because you can see that the parallax still affects where we would see all these different star positions. And so since it's not an effect of parallax, then it's not due to the motion of the earth. Therefore, it must be due to the motion of the star itself. So this is what we call apparent motion, which is the motion as it appears from earth. Um, it's also called proper motion. Okay, so coming back to this idea of parallax that we've talked about before, um, just to see if you remember, uh, what, what units was it commonly measured in? So since stellar motion is measured like parallax in milli arc seconds per year, that means that that proper motion is very small for most stars. Um, and this is, um, you know, the motion of the star because the star itself is moving, not because of the position of the Earth around the sun. So the, the motion of stars through the sky from our perspective happens because we're not all, like not all stars in the galaxy are moving at the same rate. Just like the planets around, around the sun, stars in different parts of the Milky Way move at different speeds. Um, the star that has the biggest proper motion on the sky is Bernard's star, which has a proper motion of um, 10.4 arc seconds per year. So that's really big because most, most proper motion is measured in milli arc seconds, which is 1,000th of an arc second, but Bernard's star is, you know, 10,000 times bigger than the proper motion of most other stars. So even though these are very small, they are measurable and we can use them to, um, to see how stars are actually moving through space. Um, but this particular measure, the proper motion, is only one piece of what we need to actually calculate the velocity of a star through space. So, uh, to try to get at the idea of why that's the case, I want to ask you another poll question. Uh, this time, this is more of a physics question, I guess, about ants on a record player. So let's say you've got three ants, they're standing on a spinning record. The question is, which of these ants is moving the fastest? So here's the poll. So if we, if we kind of chart that out, uh, the idea that the ants are all traveling in different sized circles uh, but they all take the same time to go around because the record uh, is a solid body and so it has to all rotate at the same time. This is not necessarily true of something like, you know, stirring a pot of water, right, where things are free to move at different speeds relative to their distance from the center of some circle. But in this case, we have a solid body, 
So Aunt C makes the biggest circle in a given amount of time. Bigger distance per same time means bigger speed. So how does this actually relate to the idea of the velocity of stars through space? Well, different stars are a different distance from us, right? So if we're sitting at the center of this circle, let's say observing from our position at the Earth, then um, different ants, different stars, will appear to move more or less simply based on their distance, even if they're all moving at the same speed, okay? So um, the idea here is that we're, we're looking at a component called the transverse velocity, meaning the velocity that's perpendicular to our line of sight. And that's given by the distance away from the center, so the radius of the circle that the ant is sitting on, multiplied by the rotation rate, so how many RPMs is your record player playing at. All right, so when we're looking at the motion of stars, this is what that looks like. That transverse velocity is perpendicular to our perspective. Here I put the sun instead of the earth because earth orbits around the sun, so this is our view. Um, so we need to know the distance here and then multiply it by the proper motion, where the distance to the star is taking the place of the radius in the previous equation, and the angle, the proper motion, is taking the place of uh, the uh, orbital speed. All right, so uh, this is not the only thing that we need to know, though, if we want to know the actual velocity of a star through space because it's not necessarily true that uh, all stars are always an equal distance from us and moving only perpendicular to our line of sight. They may be moving closer to us or farther away at the same time. So that means that in order to calculate the true space velocity of a star, we need to know its transverse velocity, which we can measure through the proper motion, but we also need to know its radial velocity. So this is the piece that we're gonna focus on next but we're first gonna to have to take a detour through the idea of Doppler shift.